Welcome back, everybody. In this session, I'm going to be discussing mistakes. Um, for sure, we all make mistakes. We make mistakes in life. I certainly made a lot of mistakes in my homework many years ago. Um, and, you know, absolutely, um, you know, any trader, even successful traders um, that have been trading for a long time will always mistakes make mistakes along the way. The, the key for us, though, um, to, to make us better traders is is really to be honest with ourselves about these mistakes, um, accept, you know, that potentially there will be losses coming with mistakes, um, as there generally are in, in life, to be honest. Um, and the key really is to understand better what went wrong and why. So we need to do a little bit of analysis. We need to have a good understanding of our markets and the skill sets that we that we need to navigate these markets, and then learn from those experiences so that we stop repeating these mistakes in the future. Now, I'm going to help identify a few mistakes that, that I feel are, are pretty common, um, certainly with inexperienced traders. And, and then I'm going to be looking to um, maybe show a couple of solutions. Um, unfortunately, there's no silver bullet for this. Um, a bit of hard work and, and the process will that we that we have spoken to you about in the past will most definitely help. But, you know, for me, I always want to understand what the problem is before I can actually address it. Now, one key thing here, lots of people will talk it in, in various textbooks um, around the fact that a large majority, and in this quote here, um, this is a book I read many moons ago, 80% um, of trading is psychological and 20% is methodological. What are we saying by that? We're basically saying that the majority of the key decisions that we make are done from a psychological or emotional perspective. It's the emotions that drive our behaviors and the behaviors, certainly when our emotions get pretty high, can sometimes be irrational. So they're actually identifying the fact that it's our emotions that, that really are the key to our success. And can we control those emotions to enable us to be profitable traders? The other 20% um, of method is clearly the um, you know the process of, of pressing buttons, buying and selling, identifying levels, etc. Now, for me to be um, successful, I want to flip that script and I want to try and make twenty percent of what we do just the psychology side, and I want to control those emotions by trying to build a platform, build a formula, um, the method behind my madness. Um, that covers 80% of what I do. And I hope that that will actually help me control some of those emotions because we have to accept that we are human beings. We're not robots. So we will get emotional, particularly when volatility comes. Now, when those emotions come, here's just a couple of examples of things that will drive us to make errors. We generally have a fear of making a loss. There's a big stigma around stop losses. Lots of people don't use them. Um, inadvisedly, in my opinion, uh, because a, a good stop loss that's affordable um, can really be the, uh, the the building blocks of, of a good trader. So, you know, there is this fear of making a loss. There is a fear of missing out. This really has, um, you know, come to light as social media has really entered into our lives over the last 20 years. And, you know, I'm going to discuss each of these um, on the next couple of slides, but we really do have a fear of missing out, which which will cause us some problems. There's also a fear of leaving money on the table. You know, when we get to profit levels, some people actually are concerned that if they sell out uh, to take a profit, if it moves even further, they have left some money on the table. Well, we can get around that one as well. And as you see here, fear um, is... Um, a big, big factor in, in lots of the decision making um, that comes with trading. Now, on the, the actual trading side, I guess here's some method. Um, here's just a couple of things um, that is very, very noticeable within experienced traders. Uh, they they tend to take their profits way too early, but they run their losses way too far. Some of that is in association with those on the left hand side there. They don't want to make a less a loss. So they wait and they wait and they end up making a much, much bigger loss. So again, 
these are interlinked. There's lots of psychology linked into some of the thoughts that are on the right-hand side. And one other key thing, um, when we make a loss, um, and really these mistakes tend uh, to cause losses because that's when we are becoming a bit more irrational um, and not really thinking about what we're doing, we tend to go back into the market and try and chase it to recover those losses, whether that be on a previous trade or a batch of trades. And what happens there? We tend to overtrade. We're trying to make something happen. Um, and again, no silver bullet, but there's things we need to do um, to be able to cope with some of these issues. Now, if I was to look at some of those psychological things, just a quote there um, on the next slide from Richard Branson. And basically, he's talking about if you are a risk taker, and he's not just talking about trading here, but risk in general, the art is to protect the downside. And the best way to protect your downside is to understand it and to actually have a great formula around it. We've spoken already that if we're honest with ourselves, if we can look in that mirror and say, do you know what? I should have made money today, but I lost money because I made two errors. Two errors because I either panicked or I got greedy. Um, those kind of answers are the things that we need to be honest about. We then accept the fact that we've done them, and then we go learn. We learn from what we've done, and we try and find a way of stopping it happening again. This requires discipline. We have to go about this in a very, very disciplined manner. I would suggest if you're evaluating trades, you do it when you're square, whether it be the end of a day, the end of a week, or even at the end of a trade. Don't have risk on. You need to be able to sit down and work out exactly what happened. Now, I've mentioned already that fear plays a big part. Greed is the other one. Um, you know, so we need to be very, very careful. These are behaviors that come from human beings. And certainly as our emotions get heightened, and that will definitely come when volatility comes, you know, these emotions will drive different behaviors. And what we need to do is understand and try and control these emotions and stop them getting out to the extremes. I believe the best way to do that is to build that process that I spoke about. If you talk to any elite athlete, they'll always be talking about trusting in the process. The process is what they practice for. They practice rhythm. They practice little triggers in their golf swings, those kind of things. Um, and what happens is when things go slightly wrong, they actually go back to that process because they trust in it. And trading exactly the same. So we need to find what that process is. Um, hopefully over the, the coming weeks and what's gone on before, we can get you to that point. But the simple thing about fearing losses is that we actually should embrace them. You know, this stigma of stop losses, you know, stop losses are your best friend in markets. They protect and preserve your capital. They allow you to control that downside risk that Richard Branson speaks about. As long as we accept them and then we're smart around the way we protect them, then these stop losses should be our friend. The side around FOMO, the only advice I can give you is just don't believe everything you see on social media, read in chat rooms. You know, before you act on any information like that, you need to verify its source. You need to know and understand a lot more information. Just someone saying, you've got to jump on crypto. I've just made a million pounds out of it just as an example, because those crazy things have happened, um, does not mean to say that it's an absolute barnstormer of a trade. Firstly, you don't know whether that's actually true. Secondly, where are the levels? Where did these people get in? Where did they get out? What size risk are they taking? These may not actually reflect your trading conditions. So please don't jump on these things. Trust in your own process. Create your own ideas. The market will offer you lots depend on what profit uh, products maybe you specialize in. So trust in your in yourself, find your own ideas and make money out of those. We mentioned about leaving money on the table. Again, that's a, a little bit of fear, fear that it may carry on moving and you've got out too quickly. 
the second one is a little bit of greed, actually, because we all need to take profit at, at any given time. We need that boost, that confidence, the extra money going into our trading account. So actually taking a profit is not a bad thing. And again, I'm going to show you a little bit around the process that can help us with these errors. So a couple of key um, errors here I see, in, you know, this whole thing about taking profits too early. And I know this flies in the face of, of what I just said around, um, you know, getting out too quickly and having um, the, the fear that you leave money on the table. This is a completely thing. This is more structural. People tend to take profits because they get excited. Um, but also they don't understand the structure of risk reward either. That's something I'll spend a lot more time on in another session, but it's whole, it's all part of risk management and your order management. And it's part of planning that trade and then executing that plan. And again, this is that process um, that I speak about. And if you can build that foundation underneath you and you understand that process, then this will stop you falling into these traps of taking profits too early and as as we say running your losses too far because you're frightened of losses losses will happen um, they're inevitable so we have to accept them but manage them properly the whole idea around chasing losses and over trade them i've coupled them together here there is no quick fix all i will say to you is chasing a loss on a trade is not going to do you any good jumping in late on a move to try and get money back. These things won't help. What you have to do is take a breath. You have to take a step away from those markets. Maybe it's something as simple as your timing that's wrong. Maybe you are getting too excited about jumping into trades too quickly. So you need to take that breath, You know, sit back from the market. It may only be for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Other people may need a day out of the market. They need to then reassess what they're doing. It goes back to what I mentioned about the evaluation of what you've done, the acknowledgement that you have made mistakes. Well, let's be honest about them, identify them, and then reassess where we are with those mistakes, evaluate what those mistakes are, and then hopefully courses like this can help get us out of continually making those mistakes. So I'm going to leave you with the uh, the process wheel that we have here. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen it before, and I'm just going to very, very briefly tell you why this can help you deal with your mistakes. Because once you get this process in motion, it will happen instinctively to you. You will find ideas fairly quickly because you are reading and researching. You're looking at your charts all the time if you're taking this seriously. So it's not like you're all of a sudden starting a brand new book and you've really got to get into it. These markets don't stop. So the whole read and research piece is just continuous for you. You get a better idea when we start talking about risk and making sure that we have the right level of risk on at all given times, because that's a big mistake that people make as well and that may come round to some of our answers you know why did i make this mistake why did i panic and sell out well it may have been because i had too much risk on as simple as that so there's my answer that's my problem and my answer is how do i adjust and how much do i adjust and all of this process will that we have here will walk you through all of that the order management, the execution, that sits right in the middle there. Plan your trade and train your plan. So all I'm saying here is get yourself a nice foundation that you know you can rely on. And if things start to go a little bit wrong, that final box there of evaluation will help you adjust and tweak this process. Will It should help you identify maybe where you are going wrong. But the key thing for me as well is making sure you take that breath and you do take the time to sit back. Don't go chasing trades. Don't go trying to make money out of markets that are not offering anything at that point in time. The market will offer you plenty of opportunity when you're ready to get back into that market, when you've got a little bit of confidence back, and you actually identify some of the problems that you're facing, and hopefully you can cure them yourself.